right, so welcome everybody. I'm Yolanda. I'm Miss Rosie. And today we're gonna to be uh, book talking some Black History Month books. And so uh, we've broken them down into a couple of categories. Um, we have history, uh, cultural, and what I call just life, meaning people just doing life, and also inspirational. So let's get started today. Um, before I do that, let me tell you, uh, this uh, program you can find on video on scottpublib.org, and we're also archived on YouTube. So now let's get started. We're gonna read Busy Eye Day by Anne Marie Pace and illustrated by Fran Preston Gannon. And we are doing this with the permission of Simon and Schuster. All right, and this would be from the Just Life category. All right. Busy Eye Day. Busy Eye Bug. Stock Eyed Slug. One Eyed Jack. Two Eyed Zack. Closed-eyed rider, open-eyed slider, busy-eyed day at the park. Weary-eyed weeper, bleary-eyed sleeper. Blue-eyed granny, brown-eyed Sammy. Blind-eyed mare, cross-eyed bear, busy-eyed day at the park. Eagle-eyed keeper, round-eyed peeper. Side-eyed frog, wide-eyed dog. Squirrel-eyed girl, girl-eyed squirrel, busy-eyed day at the park. Two-eyed skater, carp-eyed baiter. Six eyes, eight eyes. See you later. No more spiders, no more bugs. Loving mama gives big hugs. So much to see, best place to be on a busy eyed day at the park. Super cute. Yes, I love that book. All right, Miss Rosie. All right. Well, you can't talk about February without mentioning a little bit of love. And so I thought for one of my Black History Month books choices, I would choose uh, One Love by Bob Marley. Now this is of course based on his award-winning song and here is the book. It's got super adorable illustrations and this one um, is published by Chronicle Kids. It's adapted by Sedella Marley which is a daughter and I just love all the imagery in this one and of course you can play the song after or before you read the book but you can actually read the book just like the song. So it goes one love, one heart, let's get together and feel all right. So as you go through the whole book you can sing the song and it's got wonderful imagery of neighborhoods and families getting together to make a local park a beautiful community space. So just the spirit of love and just the song and just a great um, uplifting books. I thought that would be a great choice and of course we have this here at the library. Right. Now a second item I uh, grabbed that I really enjoyed uh, reading is called Not Quite Snow White and that is this book right here and we all know the story of Snow White and the reason I love this book so much is because it's a little black girl who dreams of being a lead in the play. And when the play Snow White is chosen, she wants to audition for Snow White. 
and she gets bullied and made fun of. They tell her she's not white. She can't play Snow White. But she is a strong-willed girl, and she loves to sing and dance, and she thinks she is a star. The illustrations in this are just <laughs> adorable. She is just in her costumes and pirouetting and dancing and her baseball cap, and she's just outside, just living her best life. She is all things actress. I think there's a lot of kids out there who are acting all the time. But when they tell her that, you know, she can't audition, she gets super sad, super duper sad. And she goes home and the life and the spark is out of her. And her parents tell her, you know what? You've got to be you and you can do it. You can be anything you want. You can sing and dance and you have always been a princess so you can be any princess you want. And so she auditions and she is a star, a shining star. She just rocks out <laughs> at that audition and man is she good. And everyone realizes, yep, she was meant to be Snow White <laughs> after all. So just a really uplifting story, and for any kid who's ever told, you can't do that because you don't fit the part, you can have the part. It was a great book. I highly recommend this one. All right, do you want to take over for the next sure. batch? So um, I'm going to tell you about some of our cultural books. And for me, culture is about family, but also about customs, and so... Um, you know, as a black person, hair is a big thing in black culture. So I always want to pick a good um, black history book that uh, deals with boy hair as well as girl hair. And I, we have two really good ones. So the one for the boy is, called, is Crown, an Ode to the Fresh Cut by Derek Barnes. And what I love about this, mostly for me, is the art. That's not really a shocker. I love the art in picture books. But this is really gorgeous. The other thing that's really good is it just gives you a feel for what it's like for a little black boy when he's getting his hair cut or it's time to get his hair cut. And he goes into the barber shop and he's, you know, listening to the other men in there chatting each other up and what goes on during the day. And then as he gets up after his hair is cut and how he just kind of flies out the door because he, he knows he's looking really good. So this is an awesome book. Um, the other one that I love for uh, Little Black Girls, and I love this book because it's her um, dad doing her hair. It's called Hair Love. And I, won't, I don't wanna ruin anything for you, but there's a reason why he's doing her hair. But it's just such a loving book for a girl with her dad doing um, her hair. And the reason why I love this book is because when I was younger, my stepdad had to do my hair while my mom was not feeling so well. And I was not having it. It was like, I was like, mm -mm, no. And he tried so hard. And I think this book brought that back to me, how hard it was. And he just did his best. And I was just like, oh, my feathers fell. He got better and it was okay. But that's why I love this book. And this book is by Matthew A. Cherry, illustrated by Vashti Harrison. So those are two of the kind of cultural hair books that I think you would love. The other books uh, in the cultural section is, um, let me pick it up here, Going Down Home with Daddy. And it is by um, Kelly Starling Lyons, illustrated by Daniel Minter. It is an awesome book about the um, family reunions and people who have to travel um, to see their family and they go down south from up north somewhere and basically it's a lot more about what their family traditions are during uh, the festivities of just homecoming. Everybody has a gift to give and some people sing, some people uh, remind people they reminisce but he is in this particular one of the children is asked to come up with what he's going to present to the family and so it's just his exploration of family and the ties that bind them all together even though they don't live in the same place and it's just a really sweet story that pays attention to 
family traditions and just being together and enjoying being together. So, um, let's see. So, the, another category that we have is Miss Rosie read from was just um, just life, and it was kind of similar. Uh, this book is this is Chocolate Me by Tay Diggs and illustrated by Shane Evans and it's one of the things that in black culture gets dealt with like the darker skinned kids could sometimes be picked on and of course Tay Diggs is an actor so you know he just telling his story about when he was younger what it was like being in a school and having people point out to him his darkness the differences in his hair and of course his mother is so very loving and it's, it is an uplifting story in the end, but it talks very frankly about what people might say to you if you have dark skin. So I love the illustrations. I love that they are being genuine and not trying to gloss over. Um, I highly recommend that. The other thing that's cultural here, I'm flip back and forth here uh, with the cultural. Uh, music, obviously, double bass blues, and this is um, illustrated, oh, oh, illustrated by Rudy Gutierrez, and it's by Andrea Loney. It's just about a kid who loves playing the bass, and it talks about how he incorporates his day in the big city and just trying to get to his lessons into his music. So if you are a musician or your children are into music, this is a really fun one to get into. And of course, we have to pay homage to Aretha Franklin with R-E-S-P-E-C-T. Um, and this, I, Carol Boston Weatherford is uh, the author and the art is by Frank Morrison. Beautiful, beautiful book. And it just takes you on her journey. Beautiful. All right, Miss Rosie. All right, and like the Aretha Franklin book, which is a um, biography, a juvenile biography, our library has a great collection of biographies to choose from. So, in addition to all those wonderful um, who is, who was biographies like this, we have biographies of all sorts of people in our collection. So, make sure you check out our juvenile biography collection and not just our picture book collection. Now, one of the biographies we have is one on Misty Copeland, and this is her book, Firebird. She's a principal dancer with the American Ballet Theater, and she is the first African-American principal dancer ever to be named in the company in the 75 years of its existence. And this book is very special to me because in 2015, on the night before she was named the, the first uh, black principal dancer for American Ballet Theater, I was visiting family in New York City and my daughter and I, my daughter was uh, nine years old, was sitting in the audience watching Misty Copeland dance um, in Swan Lake. And so it was a very um, special night for us. She got lots of standing ovations, Misty Copeland did for that performance alone, wearing her white leotards and her white tutu and her white feathers and having her dark skin. And she is such an amazing dancer and she's so strong and just so elegant and she makes dancing look so effortless. So it was amazing to see her dance and then to read the next day her great honor in the newspaper. So um, since then, she's been on the cover of Time Magazine. She's been um, writing more children's books. She's been writing her memoirs and other books and encouraging dancers everywhere to um, just keep up with their dreams. So this book, Firebird, is wonderfully illustrated. Um, by Christopher Myers. It's written by Misty Copeland. It's an award-winning book, and I just love it the way it's very sparsely worded. Um, I'm not gonna read the whole thing to y'all. We'll show you a few of the pages. Just, just the elegant dancers, and it's about how, you know, your future seems so far off, but if you keep striving for it, um, eventually you will get there. And so there's lots of, you know, dancers have self-doubt and they wonder if they're gonna be good enough and if they're gonna make it. And all that self-doubt kind of seeps into their daily uh, lessons. But once they get on stage, you know, they really shine. And in this um, 
opera or this uh, performance of Firebird, she really shines. And here's this little girl doing her first performance in her tutu and just taking inspiration from Misty Copeland. And so there they are together, the teacher and the student. You know, and it's um, the space between you and me is longer than forever. And I will show them that forever is not far away. And so there's some great uh, biographical information there about Misty Copeland. What you may not know is that Misty Copeland had a very rough rough childhood compared she was raised part-time by her dance teachers um, she was often estranged from family she persevered um, and she actually did not start dancing until she was 13 wow. she did not start as a teeny tiny ballerina she was never really given the opportunity to do that and when she finally took up dance at 13 she realized just how um, how she had self-control and the power and just the majesty and the beauty of it all gave her the passion to keep going in dance and so um, she is really inspirational we have biographies about her and I also just love that this is hits the categories of inspirational mm -hmm. and history and everyday life and everything so wonderful choice there with Missy Copeland's Firebird now the next one I'm going to talk about you may have seen before and this is called Parker Looks Up. I'm going to read this, it's with, read with permission from Simon & Schuster Publishers and it is by Parker Curry and Jessica Curry and illustrated by Brittany Jackson. And Parker Curry is actually this little girl right here on the back and her mom wrote this book for her. She took her to the portrait gallery to see all the different art, and her daughter is inspired by this one particular painting. So here we go. Parker looks up an extraordinary moment by Parker Curry and Jessica Curry. Parker Curry loved to dance. Dressed in her favorite tutu, she imagined that she was a dancing queen. But one rainy Tuesday, instead of going to dance class, Parker's mom said, let's go to the museum. And she said, Ava too. Parker loved visiting the museum almost as much as she loved twirling and leaping in the air. And she pulled on her boots. Mom and her sister Ava buttoned up their jackets. Have fun girls, bye dad. And off they went. Splashing and smiling all the way to the museum and surprise when they got there yay it's Gia Gia is Parker's best friend greeted them from the top of the museum steps so it's always great to go on a trip with a best friend right all right once inside the friends hurry down a long hall looking at all the paintings around them big open space in that museum. They saw prancing horses and blooming flowers. And the artist does a great job of incorporating actual paintings in this. A bushy mustache, a shiny jeweled necklace. Ooh, two peacocks with red eyes and a basket of slimy fish. Ooh. And feathers. Lots and lots of brilliant feathers on this piece of Native American art. Hurry up, Ava, she says to her sister. When Gia spotted a playroom, she raced ahead and Parker charged after her. Explore, let's make silly faces. After Gia stuck purple hair onto an easel and Parker added a pirate hat and sunglasses, it was time to go home. Time to go, girls! But skipping down the hall, the girls spied a row of frilly white tutus. Parker raised her arms and Gia spun around and around and around. Wait for me, Parker calls, dancing after her friend, until she froze in her tracks spellbound. Parker Curry looked up. And as with all children, little children are always looking up, so they have that endearing face. 
A portrait of First Lady Michelle Obama loomed before her. She had rich brown skin, just like Parker, and kind, familiar eyes that reminded Parker of her mother, her grandmother, her sister, and yes, even of herself. How could someone look so real and so magical all at the same time? Who is she? asked Parker. Parker's mother's voice filled the air and her words coming to rest squarely on Parker's tiny shoulders. And this is what her mother says. She's a mother, lawyer, writer, courageous, smart, inspirational, confident, dynamic, advocate, honest, volunteer, mentor, hopeful, friend, sister, hero. She's a queen, Parker whispered, unable to look away, to move, to breathe. In that moment, Parker saw more than just a portrait. She saw a road before her with endless possibilities. She could do anything. Suddenly, Parker felt a small hand in hers and the spell was broken. Come look, Ava, she said her arm around her little sister standing tall, for Parker Curry was feeling powerful and strong. And even though she hadn't moved, inside she was dancing. <laughs> Look at that. And just at the end, there's a note that Amy Sherald is the acclaimed artist of that portrait. And if you read in here, you'll see there is a little girl Parker in her dress just like Michelle Obama. I just love this book because it's inspirational but it's also true to life because all kids go into museums and are just amazed by some of the stuff that they see there. So it was just wonderful to see that little child looking up and just kind of being transfixed like, um, like by the piece of art just as we all have at one point in the time when we were at a museum. So. I hope you like those two books that I've talked about, and I'll turn it over to Yolanda for a few more. All right, so we're going to uh, book talk a little bit more of what's here on the desk, um, and then I'm going to take you into my favorites. Um, so let's see what we have. Oh, your name is a song. Uh, it's by uh, Jamila Tompkins Bigelow, and illustrated by Louisa Uribe. And I love, love, love this book because it's about um, a little girl whose name is different from other people's names and they have trouble saying it. Um, and she was starting to feel down about that. Well, she, her grandmother came uh, into the picture and started telling her about her name and basically she started to sing her name. So, and then she got invited to school and she started to sing all the children's names. And so it's kind of this way to inspire children to not be so afraid to be different, but and have them embrace it and then embrace, have other people embrace it as well. It's just a very uplifting book that way. And again, for me, it resonated because, you know, with a name like Yolanda, in the 70s growing up with other kids who didn't have names like that so much um i got called a lot of different things and it just it it was a very very precious way to talk about that and not be on a bad note so love 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 this book um the next one um, that's going to lead into my historical talk um, let me see here so the historical and the inspirational. So I picked this because I thought it was just um, a great book, Grace for President. It's by, uh, let's see, Kelly DiPuccio and pictures by Leyuan Pham. Um, so basically this book is a little girl in her whatever grade class, she goes in and they're talking about the presidents. For the day and they roll down this big scroll and they're all men and she's just like wait a minute wait a minute <laughs> and she's like where are the girls and her teacher tells her basically mm, 
right now there haven't been any women presidents and she's just like I'm going to be the president and so the teacher gets another classroom involved and basically it ends up being like a class election and runs off and I won't tell you the end but this little girl is very inspired uh, during it and throughout the whole thing um, just a really really cute book kind of has some of the ways in kid language uh, that president it talks about the presidency and how it goes and um, even the electoral college they throw in some kid friendly definitions of that and how it's supposed to work so it's it's really done well it's not overly laden with any kind of political language or anything like that it's just a very cute book and a cute take on it. So, I am going to go deeper into history because the history picture books, they are so my jam. They are just the so best. So many good ones. So, yeah, and just so, so the best. And again, I want to reiterate what Roseanne said about the ju juvenile biography section. So I'm gonna pick up a couple of these because I know you guys are probably already familiar with this section. The Who Was books, lots and lots of black people in the Who Was series. So those are available and on our spinner uh, for when you do come back in, but in our juvenile biography section. So lots of those. Um, but the other thing that I like about um, historical picture books is they actually are accurate books and they are bite-sized pieces of the history. And what I have learned about uh, picture books is that actually they do surveys uh, using picture books in classes and not just high school, for high school students and for college students. So just think about that when you are wanting to know more about history in general, but specifically black history. So this is one that I didn't, I was not very familiar with at first. Fancy Party Gowns. It's the story of fashion designer Ann Cole Lowe. And it was just, it, it was not sugar-coated. They told the true history of why she never rose to notoriety, obviously, because she was black. But it also told who she made dresses for. And one of the most famous people she made dresses for um, was Kennedy's wife, Jacqueline Kennedy. And it just talked, yeah, and it just talked about her love of being a seamstress and what that meant to her. And it was worth it to her every day to get up and go do what she did. She loved, loved, loved her job. This is an awesome biography of her. Um, so what do we have here? Oh, this one is a current, very current uh, homage to our John Lewis, Preaching to the Chickens. Uh, it was by, it is by Jabari Asim and illustrated by E.B. Lewis. And it is just a delightful book. Um, you've probably heard that Preaching to the Chickens, but part of that history is that when he was younger, that's how he would go out and do his sermons and he would preach to the chickens because you know, he didn't have to do it in front of a crowd. And, you know, they didn't really talk back or anything. <laughs> you know, it was kind of a crowd that he had corralled. So it's just a delightful book and, re and accurate in its portrayal of what went on. So that's another one. And, of course, I never can just leave out this one. It is an oldie but a goodie. Uh, Henry's Freedom Box, a true story from the Underground Rail Railroad. Uh, and I'm sorry, I cannot read the name, so let me open it up here. It is by Ellen Levine, and Kadir Nelson is the artist. Beautiful pictures, and really well done story. And so, for those of you who don't know, it's the story of the guy who mailed himself to freedom. It is a real story, and it always gets me, <laughs> that he actually put himself in a box and mailed himself into a free state. And that's how he gained his freedom. Amazing book. And trying to rush up here. This is a newer one. Uh, and this is Overground Railroad by Lisa Klein Ransom and uh, 
the Coretta Scott King medalist, James Ransom, did the pictures in this. I'm rushing because this is my other favorite, Oldie But Goodie. Oh, that's my favorite. Love, love, they love. They need to make a movie out of this. Yes. I would so watch that yes. movie. He is so cool. He is just. Just the coolest. He really is. I, Bad news for outlaws. It was, it's just got the greatest time. Yes. <laughs> the Remarkable Life of Bass Reeves, Deputy U.S. Oh, Marshal. His story uh, is amazing. And by Vonda Michelle Nelson, illustrations by R. Gregory Christie. There is nothing to not like about this book. And what, if you don't know, this is the guy that the Lone Ranger was based off. The mask, the black mask in the Lone Ranger, that is an homage to this guy. <laughs> so he really was a marshal and he really, no one messed with him. No person wanted to be, to know that Bass Reeves was on their tail. He brought in, I believe, every person that they sent him yeah. after. And, and I he think was a he master of disguise. Yes. He used all sorts of techniques yes. of deception to get his guy. And he always got his and guy. And he always got and his guy. And I think guy. the truth is he didn't shoot very many people. I think no, maybe one, one, one. one person. He, that non is amazing. Nonviolent. But no, if you knew that Bass Reeves was on your trail, you were hightailing it out. And some people even gave themselves up once yes. they, <laughs> once they, they knew, knew he was on their trail. He was just like, we're done done if you don't know his story look him up he is the awesome. coolest like every single police show you ever right. watched is based on that got guy some, some bass reeves yes. in there because he he invented it all <laughs> <laughs> yes the coolest okay so this one is black cowboy wild horses a true story from julius lester and jerry pinkney obviously you know jerry pinkney beautiful artwork always my fave so that's a true story about that just black cowboys in the west all right and also i'm gonna end this one here it's heart and soul and it's by kadir nelson and it's the story of america and african americans again no sugar coating just the beautiful truth or the, sometimes a very unbeautiful truth um but done so beautifully in picture. It just, yes, you, you want to check this out. Um, and it looks like we need to be winding on down here. So let me tell you, I was going to read this book to you, but now I'm just going to tell you about it. It's called The Library Book. And this cute little girl just, it's a rainy day. And what does she want to do? What can she do? She can't go outside. So she decides she's going to put on her boots, put on her coat and go on down to the library like you guys. We want you guys to go on time down to the library and check out some books. Um, and this book is, uh, it doesn't tell me on the front. <laughs> so it's by Tom Chapin and Michael Mark and illustrated by Chuck Groening. But very cute book. And yes, we do want you to come on down to the library. Put some books on hold. Put some books on, yes, don't really come down. Well, <laughs> to pick them up, yes, but <laughs> yes. Um, so let's remember, you wanna tell the books that you talked about? Yeah, absolutely. I'm gonna do one more shout out here for this book. Um, this is called My Three Best Friends and Me, Zule. And the reason I picked out this book is because Zule is an African-American girl who is blind. And January is um, Braille and a uh, Braille Awareness and Blind Awareness Month. And since February follows right on that, I thought this was great. We do have some Braille board books uh, in the library here as well, if you ever have the desire to see what that feels like to read. But in this one, she and her three best friends are thick as thieves until they find out that it is guess what field day <laughs> so everyone's excited about doing the different you know the the sack races and the tosses and the jumps and Zule is blind and she says all I want to do is run mm -hmm. and so for weeks she and one of her teachers practice running and walking with her cane. Her cane is what the blind people use to sweep back and forth on the floor to see where they're going. And so she has her cane and her teacher walks with her up and down the halls and then she begins to run and on field day, 
she runs with her teacher to compete in field day in the races. So even though she was blind, she and her teachers and her best friends who encourage her the whole way, she participates in field day. So that's another great feel good one. So um, as we said, we've gone through some inspirational, some just life, another great just life one is Jabari Tries. And this one's by uh, Gaia Carnwall. Also, um, my three best friends in Bizole is by Carrie Best with pictures by Vanessa Brantley Newton. So that's a really cute one. Um, Jabari Tries, I really like this one because it's a father-son sister book. So dad encourages him to work with his sister like a partner, even though she's the, the baby sister, you know. And so they are getting ready to build something, some contraption that will fly across the yard. And there's some frustrations and some failures, but they keep on going and keep on going. And she's his, his assistant. And finally, he learns to just breathe through all the difficulties. His dad calms him down and says, hey, you can do this. It's a great, friendly, uh, family-friendly, uh, feel-good story. And they succeed. And then he looks at his sister, and his sister looks at him, and they're like, next, rockets! <laughs> so really great book. Also, if you have a... A, a little boy with a with a little sister who mm -hmm. likes to help out this is a great one as well but like i said we've read parker looks up and not quite snow white we've done little songs from bob marley lots of great biographies firebird um best friends and braille running for president lots of great biographies in our who is who was and there are so many great books in our collection feel free to browse through our collection of picture books and even our juvenile series, our yes. nonfiction, our, our um, Teens book. June biogra juvenile biographies, our teen books and tween books, we are sure there's something there that you will find to enjoy. I have one more. All right. So here's <laughs> uh, what we have. I want to take you out with this last inspirational book. It's The Undefeated. If you haven't heard of it already, it was a 2020 Caldecott winner. And what that is, it is uh, the winner for illustrations, the book award for illustrations, best illustrations for the year. And it is by Kwame Alexander and Kadir Nelson. It is a beautiful poem. And um, it is, there's gonna be a link at the bottom of our screen, hopefully, that you can click on to go hear Kwame Alexander read to uh, a bunch of kids in Britain. It is beautifully done and a gorgeous, gorgeous look. So with that, I just wanna remind you that you can find us on YouTube at Scott Pub Lib, and we just want you to come on down and check out some books. Put some books on hold. Yeah. Like us on our Facebook page. Yes. And check out all of our virtual programming here from the library at scottpublib.org. Thank you so much for joining us. And I hope we talk to you about some great books that you're interested in checking out. And hopefully we'll see you at the library. Yep. Happy Black History Month.